obviously 2020 has been this unprecedented year for all of us. Uh, in, yeah. And this pandemic has touched us all in a variety of different ways. And you know, I want to take us back to March 11th uh, of 2020 um, and the day the NBA season stopped. Uh, I had been, you know, with us, Nets on Yes, the night before calling Nets Lakers and flew that morning, uh, Wednesday, March 11th, to Dallas, Texas, to broadcast um, the Mavericks game and uh, for ESPN. And that day, you could start to feel uh, the momentum of the pandemic growing and uh, concern about what was going to happen with our sports seasons. And, you know, we had just learned that the Nets were going to play their game in Golden State without fans. And um, Doris and I even talked about, hey, we're going into this game tonight. Let's enjoy it. We don't know when we're going to have a full arena again. You know, newsflash, we still haven't, right, gotten that. We don't know when we're going to be back broadcasting, like if the season would stop and, it, you know, or, or, or you know, what's going to happen. We just had no idea, you know, so like let's enjoy. And I think at that time it was more so like let's enjoy having the fans because we're probably going to be playing without fans for a while, right? So let's enjoy this experience. So we go into the arena. It's our first time having our interactions with coaches where they're seated six feet apart. You know, nobody, you know, normally you walk into the arena and you know what it's like, Michael. It's like, you know, a reunion in, in all these road arena. Everybody, hey, hey, dapping you up, hugs, high fives. And everybody's kind of like keeping to themselves. And, and it's a strange feeling. And even Rick Carlisle coming into the room, Mike Malone talking about how he spoke with his team about COVID. And uh, the game uh, and the broadcast uh, goes on. And uh, all of a sudden, Doris is checking Twitter. And she sees a tweet from one of the reporters in Oklahoma City about the Jazz Thunder game not starting because of some unknown reason. And everybody knew that Rudy Gobert was listed as questionable for the game for an illness. So now we're like tracking, oh, what is going to happen here? Is there a chance Gobert has COVID? And we can't say anything on air or speculate. We're waiting for news on that. Well, as the game's going on, Doris, who is one of my top five favorite human beings in the world and absolutely amazing as a teammate and partner, she had told me, like, she had a bad headache that day, you know, was feeling kind of tired. At that time, those weren't seen as, as symptoms of COVID. It was just, like, the dry cough and fever, right? right. But I was like, I'm a germaphobe anyway, and so I was, like, a little, like, guard up. And Doris is like very touchy feely during a broadcast. All right. She's like, she's constantly like, if, if she's talking about taking a charge, she's giving you that charge. You know, I mean, she's like constantly on your arm, like slapping you during a broadcast. So during the game, she's like hitting my hand under the broadcast table over and over again, hitting my hand. And germaphobe Brian, realizing a pandemic is blooming, is like, Ugh. and Doris, like, you know, wasn't feeling well. I'm taking hand sanitizer out of my pocket. And I'm squirting my hand underneath the broadcast table over and over again, just squirting my hand because I'm like not taking any chances. Uh, and the irony of that was we ended up finding out not till about 10, 11 days after that, that Doris actually did have COVID-19. And that was her first day of symptoms as, wow. she's, as we're doing this broadcast. And as we're going to break, and I forget exactly when in the game it was, but my producer gets in my ear, you know, maybe it was end of second or early third quarter. And he says, we're, we're like, we're already about to head to break. It's like eight, seven. And Ian Gruca comes in my ear and he just says, Ryan, tease, we have big breaking news on the other side of the break or huge NBA breaking news on the other side of the break. So I just hear it in time to say, you know, hey, we have huge NBA breaking news on the other side of the break. Boom, we hit break. Now I'm expecting to find out and break that Gobert tested positive. That game's canceled. Massive. Instead, what I'm told in break is the NBA season has been suspended. We're going to have Adrian Wojnarowski, Woj. Uh, he's going to be with Scott Van Pelt in the studio. They're going to break that news. We're going to go to them, whatever. And I'm like, whoa, season suspended? Like, did not see that coming. So we get on air. I throw to Scott Van Pelt. Woj breaks the news. And now, obviously, the broadcast had already had this strange sort of eerie feel now it completely changes, right? Now it's like it becomes a news show. Uh, and, you know, Mark Cuban is sitting in the crowd, his reaction, reading the news from Woj. 
Um, he comes over to us at the broadcast table at the end of the quarter to talk with us and say, can you guys believe this, whatever. And, and we couldn't get a hold of Dallas PR to do an inter to ask if we could interview Mark Cuban about this. Um, but we desperately wanted to talk to him and get his feelings on it. And at that time, also like the in-game interviews were different because they're trying to keep space with the reporters. So Mark comes over to the table just to say, can you guys believe this? And we asked Mark, hey, Mark, will you talk to Tom Rinaldi? So Tom, he's like, yeah, I'll do it. So Tom gets Mark, does this great interview with Mark. And Mark also reveals to Tom that, yes, the players know that the season is being suspended. So now you just have this incredible juxtaposition of these guys still competing in a game, but does it matter anymore? Like something so much bigger has happened. And Doris and I are trying to find this balance of, hey, there's something global going on here news-wise that is, you know, health and safety related that is at the forefront now. But we also have people competing in front of us, so you can't completely ignore that. And so finding the balance of not sounding ignorant as you're describing action that doesn't seem to matter anymore, but also not completely ignoring it since it is happening and navigating the broadcast throughout. And at the end of the game, knowing that the players were aware, you could sense that in those final five minutes, they like let it all out on the floor because they knew this was going to be their final experience for a while. And it was just such an emotional experience. You know, Doris and I, we had an on-camera at the end, and we both almost started crying on camera at the end. And when we got done, we were just like both choked up, emotionally drained because, you know, it felt like it, it, we, you wanted to be calm and poised and deliver the news and keep people updated um, without being too emotional, but while also being empathetic of what was a really jarring, scary, surreal night. And if I think about you know, the most um, memorable broadcast I've ever been a part of. It's definitely, at this moment in my career, that Dallas Mavericks game, March 11th, uh, a Wednesday night when the NBA season, the sports world, and I think our country really finally woke up and, 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 uh, and saw what was going on. Something we'll never forget, Ryan, for sure. And I remember that day I was climbing. I was with my fiance, and we were climbing to see the Hollywood sign. And you get to a certain point, and you lose cell phone signal. And, you know, on the hike, on the way up, NBA is still going. There's going to be some adjustments, no fans for the Warriors and Nets game, but everything's going on as normal. By the time I made my way down and the signal was coming through, and it's like, oh, let's see what's going on. And I just couldn't believe what I was reading, that the NBA season was being suspended. And we had, there were so many conversations at that time. was, okay, it's going to be a month. It's going to be whatever it may be. Nothing could have prepared us for what was ahead for sure. And even how surreal it was that the NBA restarted. And I, I, again, we talked about our, our Nets on Yes family and the way that we made the most out of that situation, being at an empty, hollow Barclay Center, <laughs> yeah. calling these games, turning the floor into a roller rink, you know, making the most of it. It was, I, I cannot stress enough how much we miss not only the fans, but the workers inside of Barclay Center and the arenas around the NBA, the, the people who we shake hands with on a regular basis, and give a hug. I mean, there's, there's, there's ushers that I, you know, hug and give a kiss on the cheek to, you know, each game. You know, I miss so many people there at Barclay Center, and I'm looking forward to fans being allowed in the arenas again. But it has been such a surreal experience, my man.